welcome back in the last lecture we were discussing about how to approach to prove if f is in sword space of r n then f hat is also be will be in uh, sword space of r n so towards that end let's first look at we what is the derivative if I take and then the Fourier transform. So, by definition this is going to be d alpha 1, we are taking alpha is a multi index and d x 1 alpha 1 up to f this Fourier transform that means this is r r this is n copies n terms and e to the power minus 2 pi i x 1 xi 1 e to the power minus 2 pi i x n xi n and then this is d x 1 to d x n. Now, f is in the sword space. So, first what we can do is that we will take out all the partial derivative up to alpha n minus of 1 and then all these are independent of x n. Uh, so, then this one we can get that this is the derivative uh, up to x n minus of 1 and then this is uh, what one will get is that the 2 pi i uh, by as we notice that if I am dealing with only uh, del alpha n by del x n f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i x n uh, xi n d x n then by integration of parts and f is a source class function. So, uh, every time uh, when I take the integration this is going to vanish. So, this one is going to be minus of 1 to the power n rep yeah, with the repeated minus 2 pi i uh, xi n and then the integral over r this is f of x d x n is going to remain over there. If I am applying n minus 1 by delta x n minus of 1 alpha n minus of 1 if I am applying it over there then again I will get a factor of uh, this is alpha n then I am going to get a factor of uh, uh, minus 2 pi i and then minus 1. So, this by combining this simple observation what we are going to get this is going to be 2 pi i xi to the power alpha 1 and then this is f hat of xi. With a similar kind of thing what we can show is that 2 pi i x I take to the power alpha and then I take f x then I take the Fourier transform of this xi then this is going to be d alpha of f hat of xi. So, these two fundamental uh, relation between the multiplication with the function uh, with a polynomial and take the Fourier transform and then you take the derivative and take the Fourier transform they are consistent what we have seen it in R. Um, so, uh, with this observation one now we can we can convince ourselves that if we am looking at j alpha then d beta of f or hat at xi then I know exactly what this is d beta of f hat 
xi this is not this is going to be the Fourier transform of some source class function which is essentially this. So, this is xi alpha minus 2 pi i x beta f then this hat at xi. Now, this is nothing but I one can get that this is some constant factor d alpha of minus 2 pi i x beta f this this entire uh, for a transform of z and uh, what uh, so this is going to uh, obviously this is a source class function so we can write it down and you can take the derivative inside to get uh, that this we can control it over there. So, just as in the case of R this is what we had done. So, this will put it if f is in Schwartz space of R n then f hat is also in the Schwartz space of R n. So, once uh, we have uh, this, then natural uh, we must try to aim to get the Fourier inversion theorem as well as the Planserol theorem for the Schwarz class function. And uh, what we have seen is that in R as well as in the circle uh, also in the finite abelian group what we need is a powerful tool of convolution. So, here if we define let so convolution let f and g they both belongs to the source space then define as usual f convolution of g at x this is equal to integral over r n f of x minus of y g of y dy which by the change of variable we can write this as f of y g of x minus of y dy which is again g convolution of f you can call it as if you wish. So, now as you can see that uh, one easily can see that d alpha of f convolution of g this is equal to d alpha f convolution of g which is going to be shifted and there is nothing holy about here we are taking both f and g are in Schwarz space. So, we can write down this too and thus so this f convolution g like just like in the case of r one can prove that f convolution of g this belongs to the source space of R n and therefore, f convolution of g hat at xi this is integral of R n e to the power minus 2 pi i x dot xi d x and then this uh, by opening up the definition of f convolution of g and then making the change of uh, uh, order of the integral exactly as in the case of r we will get that this is f hat of xi into g hat of xi. Okay. 
So, once we have uh, the convolution uh, nicely exactly the same way defined as in the case of R. So, we are now in a position to talk about uh, good kernel because they play a very important role in the Fourier analysis of R and as well as they have helped us to get the inversion and Plunserell theorem. So, now what is a good kernel? The definition is same. So, we can take uh, k delta to be greater or equal to 0 integral over R n of k delta of x d x is equal to 1. Now, this is a family remember. So, for eta greater than 0 for any eta mod of x greater than eta k delta of x d x this goes to 0 as delta goes to 0. This means, it is going to be concentrated near the origin and the tail of this, this is uh, very small we can control. So, the all the relevant portion is going to come from the neighborhood of the origin. Okay. So, this is uh, what we have seen how useful they are uh, in our analysis of uh, R. So, uh, in fact, if we if we look at uh, this condition, I can always replace this condition by this condition that is an easy exercise for you to do. Uh, if I say that k delta of x d x is equal to 1 and this condition I am replacing it by r n mod of k delta of x d x which is lesser equal to m for all delta. That is uniformly bounded instead of the positive thing what we can take and then the third is uh, this goes to 0. So, this can also yield us the same result. So, now let us see that uh, if let f belongs to source space, then f convolution of k delta of x converges to f of x as delta goes to 0 uniformly. So, this uh, again the standard trick what you do is that integral over R n f convolution k delta is uh, f of x minus of y k delta of y dy and minus f x which one will replace by f x into 1 by f x k delta y dy. Now, if you take the modulus this the argument is same f of x minus of y minus of f of x and then this is mod of k delta of y dy. If we are assuming k is non-negative, then the mod can be replaced, otherwise you can keep the mod to be there. And uh, so, then what we do is that we break, we know that 
f is uh, uniformly continuous on a compact set i mean so in fact it is uniformly continuous everywhere so now for the continuity of f uh, what uh, we can get is that uh, there will exist a delta some small neighborhood of x in which f of x minus of y minus of f x is very small. So, you choose that neighborhood, let us say that is to be our eta uh, mod of y less than eta plus mod of y greater or equal to eta. Now, in the first integral, I will use the continuity of f and in the second integral use uh, the third property property of uh, good kernel. So, this it will give you this is less than epsilon. Uh, so, that is what the proof we have seen this proof time and again many times and uh, so, the that is why it is called a good kernel and here uh, what I can do here I need to take the modulus over. Okay, so, for so good we get uh, uh, exactly this no new idea is needed to prove this result in the higher dimension. Uh, we have just re-employed the idea of the one dimension he here. Uh, now, do we have enough uh, example of good kernels? So, as usual the generic example what one can take is that take uh, uh, k of x is equal to e to the power minus pi mod x square. And uh, if we define k delta of x is equal to 1 over delta n k of x by delta then as you can see that this is subtly non-negative all this k delta. Now, if we are integrating uh, uh, then we are going to get uh, 1 uh, and uh, uh, the third property is going to be uh, true over here because uh, if we are taking e to the power minus pi mod x square uh, by uh, delta square, then this is uh, 1 by delta to the power n, then this is dx and mod of x greater than eta. If we are taking this, then this by making a change of variable, what we get that this is minus pi mod y square dy and then this is mod of y greater than eta by delta. And uh, as uh, delta goes to 0, then uh, this eta by delta that goes to infinity and that becomes tail of uh, uh, the integrable function. Uh, tail of the integration of the Gaussian. So, this is going to be 0 as delta goes to 0. And uh, there is uh, nothing holy about this Gaussian. So you can play the same game by take, take k, any k in the Schwarz space such that integral over k delta or you can take uh, k to be non-negative and k of x dx is equal to 1. Then if you define k delta of x 1 by delta to the power n k of x 
by delta, then this argument is going to work. So, like just in the case of uh, uh, R, we have got enough uh, good kernel uh, with us to deal with. Now, another important uh, uh, thing what uh, we have seen which is very useful uh, to derive the uh, inversion formula as well as the plants rule is the multiplication formula. Now, what is the multiplication formula? Let f and g belongs to the source space of R n. Then integral R n of f of x of g hat at x dx. This is equal to integral over R n f hat of x g of x dx. Because if I write down the left hand side, this is going to be and then this is R n, this is g of y e to the minus 2 pi y dot x dy dx and then if we make the change of the order of the integration, what we are going to get is in R n, then this is g of y and then f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i y dot x dx dy as we have noticed earlier y dot x is equal to x dot y. Therefore, this becomes integral over R n g of y f hat of y dy. Okay, so, I think now uh, we are all set to derive uh, the inversion formula as well as the Pantherol theorem for the higher dimension. So, what should be the statement of the inversion theorem? This is uh, if f is in Schwarz space, then f of x is equal to integral over R n f hat of xi e to the power 2 pi i xi dot x d xi. That is what is going to be our inversion formula. Uh, so, uh, because f is in Schwarz space, so we can define the integration of f hat because f hat is is also going to be in the source space. So, now the proof is idea is exactly the same as that of uh, R let g of x g I define g delta of x this is equal to e to the power minus pi delta square mod x square. So, therefore, so what we can get is that the g delta hat at xi this is 1 by delta to the power n and e to the power minus pi mod xi square by delta square that is what we are going to get. Now, from our multiplication formula, what we know is that 
this says that the integral over R n of uh, f of x g delta hat at x dx, this is going to be R n f of f hat at x uh, g delta of x dx. So, therefore, as you can see that uh, if R h s goes to if delta goes to 0 e to the power minus uh, uh, pi delta square mod x square this goes to 1. Therefore, the R h s is R n f hat at x dx. And if I look at the LHS, LHS is nothing but f convolution of g delta hat at 0. Now, what we have seen just before is that g delta hat at 0 is a good kernel. Therefore, this is going to converse to f at 0 because it converges uniformly this kind. So, hence we get f of 0 this is equal to integral over R n f hat of xi d xi. Now, in order to get for f of x consider tau of minus of f at x. So, you consider this g of uh, x, this is equal to this at 0. So, therefore, what, uh, what we get is that tau minus of x f at 0, this is equal to integral r n tau minus of x f hat at xi d xi by our previous this is nothing but f of x. And then what we have seen is that uh, if I am translating the then taking the Fourier transform it is going to be heated by a character. So, this is R n then this is f hat of xi e to the power 2 pi i x dot xi d xi because here I am taking the translation with minus of x. That is what gives us the inversion formula. Then the Planserol So, what is the statement is mod of f of x square d x this is equal to integral over R n mod of f hat of xi square d xi. And the proof I exactly as what we can uh, guess to work define f of x f tilde x bar then what we have seen is that f convolution of uh, f tilde at 0 this is going to be equal to by definition f hat at xi f tilde hat at xi d xi and uh, f tilde hat at xi by simple calculation we can easily see that this is. So, this is equal to then R n mod of f hat of xi square d xi and this is nothing but f of x then f tilde of minus of x dx and which is equal to R n f of x f of x bar dx which is nothing but R n mod of f of x square dx and that is what is going to be the Planserol formula for R n. 
So, more or less till this point what we have seen is that uh, uh, the study of the Fourier analysis in the higher dimension is more or less in the same spirit as that of the Fourier transform in one dimension and we have got uh, inversion and plans rule. Next to you would be uh, definitely be interested to see that uh, how this uh, higher dimensional Fourier transform is going to help us in uh, other up areas or rather we would like to see the applications of the higher dimension Fourier transform uh, in some concrete problem in mathematics as well as in engineering and science. Thank you.